Hello everyone. We are starting with the series on research methodology and today we are talking about the introduction of this research methodology trying to understand what are the different components of research methodology. The research methodology is the science of learning the way the research should be performed systematically. So it is not just a scientific method but it is the overall learning how the research should be performed. Now the f important we are dealing with the important aspects and the first and foremost important point that is involved in the research methodology is recognizing or identifying the research. So it is very important that everything is not research. Just finding a button in your you know back pocket as I said or regard reading a book or asking a friend this is not research this is not scientific research. Scientific research should create scientific knowledge. So when we are researching something we should be able to if we try to understand the mechanism how a button is unbuttoned or buttoned then that is basically science. But just finding a button in your uh, sewing box that is not research. So I hope you understand this first aspect and we move further. So recognize is identifying the research. Now what to and how to recognize. Now look at these examples a biased magnetic problem or my, my mom does not store pickle in copper vessel. My color is my protection you know you can remember the beach mice or the inland mice or is there life on other planets in our galaxy. So how to recognize that these are whether they constitute a research thing or not whether it should be encompassed by a research methodology or not. So we have to recognize these aspects when I talk about my mom does not store pickle in a copper vessel the first thing as I said about science it starts with the curiosity why my mom is not storing the pickle in a copper vessel why she stores in a in a you know in a, a ceramic uh, vessel and why not a copper vessel. So when you have you observe something you get curious about something you get observe something and then you try to find a logical explanation of it there has to be some kind of a thought process or a mechanism that might be involved there then it becomes the science. If you just go and ask your mom that why do not you store a pickle in the copper vessel of course this is science as she will explain it but this is not research you just ask your mom and your mom answers you that is it you just there is no creation of knowledge there is no creation of scientific knowledge that you have done your mom told you why does not she store pickle in the copper vessel and you said ok. So this is of course there is science involved but you did not do a scientific research to find that out asking your mom would be just one method to understand why she does not store pickle in the copper vessel. You have to do a literature survey as well. You probably have to do a very small experiment. You store the pickle in copper vessel and try to see what happens. What is the difference if you try to store it in a copper vessel or if you store in a ceramic vessel. How does the taste of the pickle change? How does the appearance of a pickle change? You, you design that, you find that out, you infer on the basis of that. So you would say that you know how ma'am you are saying that we have created this knowledge because this scientific knowledge is already present. They have already explained so how have I created this knowledge? Of course you have not created any new scientific knowledge but you have undergone a research process to understand why about the scientific phenomena that the pickles are not stored in copper vessel. So when I say research it does not basically mean that you have to invent only something but you have to tune yourself 
to undergo the process of research. Of course, when you go for your doctoral studies or when you go for uh, uh, you know any kind of uh, uh, particular answering a particular problem, you would be needing to find out the newer information as well. You would be creating new information as well. But that is one thing aspect of it. But another aspect is the research methodology or research process. So, you know, being a science student or anywhere interested in science or if you want to pursue sciences or scientific research in future, then you should tune yourself to think in terms of research. You should tune yourself to question to design the uh, you know the, uh, the 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 probable solutions to validate those solutions and to infer and make conclusions for that so you know we will come into that that is basically what the research design is so as i said just asking the mom why doesn't she store and being okay with that it is not research research is if you ask your mom try to find out from the literature try to ascertain the scientific phenomena behind it, probably create certain kind of small bits of experiments to actually see that what happens when it is stored or not stored in a copper vessel, make inferences based upon that and then conclude that whether we should store pickle in the copper vessel or not. So, this is true for any other uh, uh, you know questions which is on the uh, uh, on the screen that my color is my protection so you know we have these kind of colors so we have nude mice or we have these inland mices or is there a life on other planets in our galaxy so just observing the planets of course there is it's a scientific phenomena but that's not research but when you try to find out if there are life on other planets you would probably do just by doing the literature survey. But NASA or uh, uh, you know in ISRO is doing by sending out uh, various kinds of uh, rockets and satellites and everything to understand that what is there outside the earth. Is there a life on other planet in our galaxy? So, these, that is science and that is scientific research. So, I hope I made uh, myself very clear on the aspect that when you want to do research, when you want to understand research methodology, the first basic concept is to understand how to recognize or identify the research. The second aspect is require. So, first was you should be able to recognize the research. So, you and now you know you again have to make a distinction science and scientific research these are two different things science is a phenomena science is that it involves certain kind of a mechanism but when we say scientific research it needs to have a certain method involved it requires certain method to basically reveal the science behind a particular phenomena. So, to reveal that science or to create the scientific knowledge, you need to require a research method. So, any research methodology, you should have a research method. The research method pertains to all the methods which a researcher employs to undertake the research process to solve a given problem the techniques, the procedures that are applied during the course of studying the research problem. So, you identified the research that yes, this particular thing can involve research. You should have a research method or you should you know place a certain research method. Now, again I would emphasize that in scientific methods, experimentation is an important aspect, but everything does not or cannot have the experimentation aspect. So, there are certain things, there are certain theoretical methods as well and not just the empirical method. So, defining a strategy on how to solve the research problem, 
doing the literature survey, making inferences from that survey, as I said, building theories, all these also constitute a part of the research method. These are the approaches which help in collecting the data and conducting the research in order to achieve specific objectives such as theory testing or development. So, you have laid down the theories, but when you want to validate those theories or when you develop those theories, then you need certain methods that may involve collecting data and conducting the experimentation work. So, again you know the term research is very commonly used for research methods, but now when you become advanced and you take up research methodology, then try to distinguish between and I will explain again, you know I will come back to this demarcating the difference between the research methods and research. So, research methods or scientific methods are also termed as research, but that is generally one aspect or one part of research, but not the complete research as such, because the complete research requires the identification of research, the laying down of the problem, making the strategies, then employing the techniques, making the inferences, drawing the conclusions, validating the uh, you know your conclusions and then again improving upon it and then going again in a cyclic manner the talk of cyclic research that we talked about. All the instruments and behaviors used at various levels of the research activity such as making observations, data collections, data processing, drawing inferences, decision making etc. are included in this research method. So, research anything that you can assign as research is that it should be recognized as probable research that can be done and it requires a method, research methods. These research methods can be put into three categories. The first category is the method relating to data collection. Such methods are used when the existing data is not sufficient to reach the solution. So, whatever the data you find in literature survey, it is not sufficient. So, the first category of research method is you go and collect the data where you can probably do certain kind of samplings or you can do certain kind of surveys, you know, or you can do certain kind of if at individual levels, population levels and you know even uh, the community level at all those different, so different kind of uh, data is collected when only the existing data is not enough. That is the, uh, the uh, so certain methods which are involved pertaining to that belongs to the first category. The second category is when you incorporate the processes of analyzing the data. That is to identify the patterns and establish a relationship between the data and the unknowns. So, one is just collecting the samples, collecting the responses, collecting the population data. But then when you start analyzing this data, what are the different patterns involved in it? And you try to establish the relationship between various kinds of data, between the data as well as the data which is present already existing and the unknown data or the new data that you have collected. When you analyze these data and try to make data relationships, then that belongs to the second category. The methods which are involved, we say that these are the second category methods. And finally, the third category methods which comprise of the methods which are used to check the accuracy of the results obtained. So, statistical methods. So, this is basically the validation, all kinds of you know the checking processes whether what the results you have obtained. So, those methods are basically the third category method. So, first category method involves the methods that are involved in the collection of the data primarily. It can be from the literature, it can be from the field, it can be from the experiment, but it is basically collecting, getting and collecting the data. The second category is when you infer the data. So, I hope you understand that you know all these are category data are termed as data, methods. But in totality, this is termed as research methodology. And the third category is, for example, the statistical data. So, that is also the data which is we say. 
The next aspect of research methodology is you have identified a problem, you, you have identified that this particular thing can involve research, it is scientific research. So, you have identified and recognized the research, you have laid down the different kind of methods and strategies how you will do it, but the third important aspect that comes and is an important component of scientific research or research methodology is refine. You have to refine the findings and the results. Now, to understand this better, let us look at the four characteristics of the research method that it should satisfy. First is the replicability. By replicability, we means that others should be able to independently replicate or repeat a scientific study and obtain similar if not identical results. Why, why I say similar? Because that is where the scope of refinement comes. If you say that all the result you have generated, it should be identical, then there is no scope of refinement or grow upon that data. So, they may be similar, they may obtain similar things and create also the avenues for newer things to be incorporated to make it better, to refine it further. So, the research method must be replicable. Otherwise, you know any, any scientific method we are talking about here. So, there has to be a replicability in it. Second is, it sh there should be precision. So, precision means that the theoretical uh, concepts which are often hard to measure must be defined with such precision that others can use those definitions to measure those concepts and test that theory. Particularly for the examples where we cannot uh, you know uh, uh, we cannot um, ascertain it by actual or real experiments then whatever theoretical concepts we are generating it should be precise it should it is very hard to measure these theoretical concepts but they should be very precisely laid very systematically very specifically very particularly laid so that other people can use these definitions to measure these concepts and test their theory. So, it should not be very vaguely or it should not be very generalized manner, uh, you know it should not be put uh, in a very generalized manner. It should be very precise, very specific, very particular uh, uh, how this uh, method is uh, there. So, it should satisfy a restriction method, uh, a, a research method. The third is falsifiability. Now, falsifiability stands for a theory must be stated in a way that it can be disproven. A theory that is specified in imprecise terms or whose concepts are not accurately measurable cannot be tested and is therefore not scientific. So, this is again a very, very important concept which is in which is related to the previous one that it has to be precise and it has to be that this can be disproven as well because there can be certain newer techniques that can be employed so you know because it, there can be a limitation of the technique as well as the technology grow you will be able to resolve the things better and therefore with that resolution your theories might probably be disproven and new theories will come upon based upon that. So, theory must be stated in a way that it can be disproven and when it is specified in imprecise terms or whose concepts are not accurately measurable cannot be tested is not scientific. So, one again has to be remember this point how this research methods are satisfied. And the last aspect is the parsimony. When there are multiple explanations of a phenomena, scientists must always accept the simplest or logically most economical explanation. This concept is called parsimony or Occam's razor. So, it is basically the simplest or logically most economical explanation. And therefore, you know science is basically exploring 
going through the complex things to make it simpler. That is what science is. Any phenomena which appears, if you want to explain a complex phenomena in very complex terms, it is not useful. There has to be a very simplified and logically most economical explanation to that. Then only the, uh, you know, the scientific method will be very useful for the scientific research. So, these four things, you know, parsimony when we say it prevents the scientist from pursuing overly complex or outlandish theories with endless number of concepts and relationships that may explain a little of everything but nothing in particular. So, again a very important learning that when you are employing the scientific methods or you are describing any scientific method, scientific method or you are creating newer scientific methods, please remember these four characteristics. The replicability, the falsifiability, the parsimony and basically that that has to be uh, proven again. It has to be uh, in a very precision, in a very precise manner and not in a very generalized manner. So, you use those methods, you employ those methods, you create those methods. So, that tells us about the characteristics of research methods and why I discussed about the characteristic of this research methods to understand an important conceptual component of research methodology which is refinement. Because it is falsifiable, these methods leave a scope to be improved upon and therefore refine the particular theories that have been laid down or falsify a particular theory, come up with the newer theories that is there. So, refine is an important aspect that satisfies all the characteristics. Research methods should be capable of redefining, modifying and improving leading to refinement in findings and results. Scientific research should necessarily have that scope and in research methodology this is an important component. So, recognize it should identify a research, a scientific research, it requires certain methods to basically you know do that research, there should be a scope of refinement. So, good characteristics or you know all characteristics or good methods would be satisfying all the characteristics that we talked about. The last aspect is the validity. Research validity refers to the extent of researchers ability to draw accurate conclusions from the research. That is the degree of a study's inter external and internal validity. We have done all the research that we are talking about. We have laid down, so we identify that this particular problem can be researched. We have made the strategies, we have laid down the scientific methods. We have seen that these research methods give the scope for refinement. Then whatever conclusions we make, it should be, there should be a validity required to that. And these validity as I said could be internal validity. Internal validity is corrections of conclusions regarding the relationships among the variables examined. Whatever conclusions, so whatever observations, experimentations and inferences you have made, the final conclusion that you are giving, then there should be a internal validity which is based upon the correctness of the conclusion regarding the relationship among the variables examined that whether the research findings accurately reflect how the research variables are really connected to each other. We will come back to these research variables when we do the research design, but research variables for now you can understand is the various parameters of research. So, whatever parameters of research you have laid down and the findings that you have obtained, the primary findings or the refined findings and when you are making the conclusions, then that variables or the parameters that you took for that research, are you able to connect them together? So, the research validity becomes an important aspect of research methodology. External validity is the generalizability of the findings 
to the intended appropriate population or setting. So, one thing is the internal validity that what conclusion you are making is it connected to all the parameters of the research that you started with and the external validity that what conclusion that you are making whether it is appropriated to relate it to the larger thing that you were doing the research on. It is basically related to whatever appropriate populations or the setting in which you are performing the result. So, are your findings validated with this external parameters as well? So, internal variables as well as the external setup related to or pertaining to which you were doing the research, is it validating? Your conclusion is validating that or not? So, that also becomes a very important aspect of research uh, methodology. Of course, these validity also involves research methods to perform and do, but again this becomes a very important component of research methodology. The last important uh, uh, of research methodology is the reporting that you need to share the research. So, when you study research methodology or when you do scientific research, then remember about the research methodology that the research that you do in the confinement of your labs is of no use until you put them for sharing, until you share your research with others. So, you know everybody does not have to reinvent the wheel. You have to publish your result. You have to make your data available in various data banks so that it can be retrieved. So, scientific research is again very important aspect of research methodology. So, when we study research methodology, we study the various aspects of manuscript writing, how to publish the papers, what are review papers, what are research article papers, how these research and review article papers are framed, how the referencing is done, what do you understand by plagiarism. How do you generate your data? The, the data that you have generated, how do you deposit in public databases? That is also one important aspect of research methodology that we study, that is the reporting of the research. So, this is a very generalized aspect of research methodology that when we start, we start with identifying a particular research that it has to have a basis of a scientific research, recognize the research, you define a particular problem, you require certain methods to solve that problem, to generate the data, but it can be collection of data or the creation of data by using certain experiments. You do that, then you validate those things, you report or publish those things in uh, for the others and again you go back refining it. You again refine it, you lay down the theory. So, you create theories, build theories, you refine theories. So, this is the entire aspect of research methodology and this was the introduction part. We will take up each and everything in our subsequent sessions and I hope that you will understand it better. Thank you.